Good morning. We are now live. Yes. So, how do I eat small portions, smaller portions, without feeling hungry? I know I need to eat smaller portions, but how do I do it without feeling hungry? Totally understand this. Great question. So, obviously, you know, that's a bit of advice put out there. I need to eat smaller portions because if I eat smaller portions, I'll eat fewer calories. Fewer calories will equal the weight loss. If you're coming in, give me a hello. Hey, Karen, how are we doing? If you're on replay, drop a replay. If you find this helpful, like, share it. That's how more people will reach it and and see it and hopefully it will help out. So, um, and this is something that we're actually going over in the pre-Christmas habit challenge. If you want more information on that, by the way, just comment below for Christmas. I'll send you that. We have a flexible start date from next week as well. Um, So, if we think about hunger, hunger is actually something that will happen if you start eating less food. However, the research on this is very interesting, very interesting. So there's some evidence that going like quite drastically low with with your calories might actually help reduce hunger more. So for example, you know, like the fasting, the the 5-2 stuff, not everyone, if you've got a, a poor relationship with food, you struggle with comfort eating, this isn't the way forward, in my opinion, right now based on what the research is. It's a different goal. However, um, you know, you see people have like shake soup days or lower calorie days from food, like 800 calorie days. And they're like, oh, I don't actually feel that hungry today. Actually, my hunger levels are better. Whether that's because they go into ketosis or, or whatever, um, that's interesting. However, if we just come back into the question in terms of, okay, how do I eat smaller portions without being hungry? So we're not doing any diet, anything like that. We're just going to go, you know what? I overeat, basically. Now, there's lots of factors that come into it. So number one, I'm going to give you about seven steps on here. Number one is the volume of your food. So essentially, the weight of your plate, okay? So the weight of your plate pretty much dictates how full you feel. There was one study where they used paper plates. Because they use paper plates, you can feel how heavy it is. So so your brain associates with how much food you're eating. And um, the, the heavier it was the more people will fill up. Now, food volume is just the weight of the food. Hey, Sally. So the weight of the food could be the water content, aka fruits and vegetables are full of water, which is going to help keep you full up because it's bigger foods, right? You compare raisins to grapes. Lots more food. The volume of food, how much it weighs. So we want to fill our plate with nutrient-dense, lower-calorie foods, like Vegetables. The more vegetables we have on our plate, the more full we're going to feel. Fibre, that's going to feed our gut bacteria. We know what this can do for um, digestion, health, not to mention mental health even, and how we feel. We want to feel better, right? So that's number one. Number two would be protein. We need to make sure we're getting protein at that meal. Are you having a palm-sized portion of protein at that meal? If not, you're probably not going to be as full as full as if you did. Now, if you're still hungry, could you double that? Two sizes, two portions of protein. Fill your, so, so far, if you look at how the plate's looking, we filled it with vegetables, high volume, nutrient dense, low calorie fo- foods. We're then filling it with protein, maybe two palm size. We have two palm size now. It's impossible to overeat protein, really. By the time you've overeaten, tried to overeat it, you'll be full up. So, number three, we've then got to look at, okay, what's your, actually your total calories? Maybe you're just overall under eating maybe you're going too long periods without eating so this is where fasting can actually be an an issue for a lot of people so we're actually we've gone too long without eating now we're just like ravenous and we're eating fast now we're eating so fast we're not letting our hunger hormones come in I'll, i'll give you an example i'm from an italian background i'm used to eating a hell of a lot of foods um, when I then get, went to Mrs. Frucci's house and or just ate with, ate with Mrs. Frucci, I noticed that they have much smaller portions. And actually, when you wait 20 minutes, you're actually like, oh, I'm actually right. Whereas normally, I'd have eaten, kept eating for the next 20 minutes, then felt full. And my brain would have probably went, oh, but I stopped eating. I carried on eating for 20 minutes. That's why I'm full. I ate a bit more. When actually, the, the truth is probably that I... Just wait 20 minutes because that's when your hunger hormones are going to come in, okay? So, but going back to the point, maybe you do need to increase your calories. Maybe you need to shorten the window between meals to make sure that when you're getting more in control of your relationship with food as well, you know, these are conflicting goals, by the way, and I am crisscrossing them here because this is just a short video. But there's the relationship with food, comfort eating, discomfort eating. Then there's also the... um, side of things about weight loss and often we want both at the same time that is doable but it's much harder 
And I'll go into that in a bit more detail um, on another day. However, uh, sparkling water, things that's the amount of times I've eat, I've drank some sparkling water and gone, oh, I'm not hungry. Uh, I was actually just a bit thirsty and sparkling water can help fill you up. Yes, um, potentially the enamel on your teeth um, could be pro um, like not great for that, but you've got to put something in, right? I mean, if you're having, if you're, if the worst thing you do is have some sparkling water, I'm pretty sure you're doing okay. Um, you know, I've spoken to people before who say, I don't drink sparkling water, but then they're off out drinking sparkling wine. I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Um, egg yolks, um, you know, another one I've had before are, you know, I don't eat egg yolks because of cholesterol, but then, ah, oh, the weekend I had a McDonald's. Oh, you know, we've got to get that balance right. Sometimes we demonize certain foods and without really thinking about actually what's the alternative. So, um, one of the other ones is, is something that we're doing in our Christmas habit challenge, which is eating slower. Just adding 10 chews onto your meal. Really simple, super simple. So simple that most people won't do it. So just chew your food as you would. Just count how many times you chew it. Add 10. Add 10 on. This can not only help digestion because we actually have uh, enzymes in our mouth which start to break down, called amylase, which start to break, break down carbohydrates. So digestion starts in the mouth. Isn't that incredible? It's an organ after all. Sometimes we're not letting it do its job because we're eating so quickly. We're distracted. We're watching something. And, and I'm guilty of this too. So it's so important to eat with family. And, and isn't it funny that when I'm with my kids at dinner table, I'll never have my phone on. Because I'm like, oh, I don't want, them, I don't want the, them to show them that's what you do. And there's a lesson. Imagine, would you want kids, grandkids, family members copying every habit you did? Probably not. So we've got to start demonstrating what we want them to see. Anyway, I hope that helps. Just a five minute video or so on this. So with some things, let me know what you're going to try below. Comment below. Let me know what you're going to try. Um, if you want more information about our Christmas habit challenge, then just comment below for Christmas and I'll send that over to you. Have an awesome day and I'll see you later. Take care.